everyone. So in this video, we'll be picking up where we left off in the last video on of Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. Um, I think you probably heard in the last video that um, one of my wonderful subscribers has told me that uh, during an interview that he, that they saw with um, that E.L. James had um, that she was working on Freed. So when Freed comes out, I will read it which will be wonderful because it will be in Christian's point of view. But for now, we are reading this, so at least we don't have a huge, you know, stop um, until then. And I'm also getting up a couple of videos for the next series that I'm going to be reading, uh, The Last True Vampire by Kate Baxter. Um, I've already recorded uh, two videos, and I'm going to record a couple more, get a couple, you know, under, and then I'm going to start releasing them. Uh, so that way we have an easy transition from one series to the next. So you can be listening to both or one or however. Oops, I forgot to start my timer. My bad. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started on Chapter 2 of Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. Chapter 2. I'm suddenly very awake, my erotic dream forgotten. I was on my front. I must have turned over in my sleep, I whisper weakly in my defense. His eyes blaze with fury. He reaches down, scoops up my bikini top from his sun lounge, and tosses it at me. Put this on, he hisses. Christian, no one is looking. Trust me, they're looking. I'm sure Taylor and the security crew are enjoying the show. He snarls. Holy shit, why do I keep forgetting about them? I grasp my breast in panic, hiding them. Ever since Charlie Tango's sabotage demise, we are constantly shattered by damned security. Yes, Christian snarls, and some sleazy fucking paparazzi could get a shot of you too. Do you want to be all over the cover of Star Magazine naked this time? Shit, the paparazzi, fuck. As I hurriedly scramble into my top, all thumbs, the color drains from my face, I shudder. The unpleasant memory of being besieged by the paparazzi outside Seattle Independent Publishing after our engagement was leaked comes unwelcome to mind, all part of the Christian Grey package. L'addition, l'addition. Christian snaps at the passing waitress. We're going, he says to me. Now? Yes, now. Oh shit, he's not to be argued with. He pulls on his shorts, even though his trunks are dripping wet, then his gray t-shirt. The waitress is back in a moment with his credit card and the check. Reluctantly, I wriggle into my turquoise sundress and step into my flip-flops. Once the waitress has left, Christian snatches up his book and blackberry and masks his fury behind mirrored av aviator sunglasses. He's bristling with tension and anger. My heart sinks. Every other woman on the beach is topless. It's not that big a crime. In fact, I look odd with my top on. I sigh inwardly, my spirit sinking. I thought Christian would see this funny side. Sort of. Maybe if I'd stayed on my front, but his sense of humor has evaporated. Please don't be mad at me, I whisper, taking his book and Blackberry from him and placing them in my backpack. Too late for that, he says quietly. Too quietly. Come. Taking my hand, he signals up to Taylor and his two sidekicks, the French security officers Philip, Philippe and Gaston. Gaston. Weirdly, they are identical twins. They have been patiently watching us and everyone else on the beach from the veranda. Why do I keep forgetting about them? How? Taylor is stony-faced behind his dark glasses. Shit, he's mad at me too. I'm still not used to seeing him so casually dressed, in shorts and a black polo shirt. Christian leads me into the hotel, through the lobby, and out onto the street. He remains silent, brooding, and bad-tempered, and it's all my fault. Taylor and his team shadow us. Where are we going? I ask tentatively, gazing up at him back to the boat. He doesn't look at me. I have no idea of the time. I think it must be about five or six in the afternoon. When we reach the marina, Christian leads me onto the dock, where the motorboat and jet ski belonging to the fair lady are, mo are moored. As Christian unties the jet ski, I hand my backpack to Taylor. I glance nervously up at him, but like Christian, his expression gives nothing away. I flush, thinking about what he's seen on the beach. Here you go, Miss Gray. Oh, here you go, Miss Gray. Taylor Pop passes me a life vest from the motorboat, and I dutifully put it on. Why am I the only one who has to wear a life jacket? Christian and Taylor exchange some kind of look. Geez, is he angry with Taylor, too? Christian then checks the straps on my life jacket, cinching the middle one tightly. You'll do. He mutters sullenly, still not trying to look at me. Shit. He climbs gracefully onto the jet ski and holds out his hand for me to join him. Grasping it tightly, I manage to throw my leg over the seat behind him without falling into the water while Taylor and the twins clamber onto the motorboat. 
Christian kicks the jet ski away from the dock, and it floats gently into the marina. Hold on, he orders, and I put my arms around him. This is my favorite part of traveling by jet ski. I hug him closely, my nose nuzzling into his back, marveling that there was a time when he would not have tolerated me touching him this way. He smells good, of Christian and the sea. Forgive me, Christian, please. He stiffens. Steady, he says, his tone softer. I kiss his back and rest my cheek against him, looking back toward the dock where a few holiday makers have gathered to watch the show. Christian turns the key and the motor roars to life. With one twist of the accelerator, the jet ski bucks forward and speeds across the cool dark water through the marina and out to the center of the harbor toward the fair lady. I hold him tighter. I love this. It's so exciting. Every muscle in Christian's lean frame is evident as I cling to him. Taylor pulls alongside in the motorboat. Christian glances at him, then accelerates again, and we shoot forward, whipping over the top of the water like an expertly tossed pebble. Taylor sh shakes his head in resigned exasperation and heads straight to the yacht, while Christian shoots past the fair lady and heads out toward the open water. The sea spray is splashing us, the warm wind buffeting my face and flaying my ponytail crazily around me. This is so much fun. Maybe the thrill of this ride will dispel Christian's bad mood. I can't see his face, but I know he's enjoying himself, carefree, acting his age for a change. He steers in a huge semicircle, and I study the shoreline, the boats in the marina, the mosaic of yellow, white, and sand-colored offices and apartments, and the craggy mountains behind. It looks so disorganized, not the regimented blocks that I'm used to, used to, but so picturesque. Christian glances over his shoulder at me, and there's the ghost of a smile playing on his lips. Again? He shouts over the noise of the engine. I nod enthusiastically. His answering grin is dazzling, and he opens the throttle and speeds around the fair lady, and on out to see once more, and I think I'm forgiven. You've caught the sun, Christian says mildly as he undoes my life vest. I anxiously try to assess, assess, his, assess his mood. We are on deck aboard, aboard the yacht, and one of the stewards is standing quietly nearby waiting for my life vest. Christian passes it to me. Will that be all, sir? The young man asks. I love his French accent. Christian glances at me, takes off his shades, and slips them into the collar of his t-shirt, letting them hang. Would you like a drink? He asks me. Do I need one? He cocks his head to one side. Why would you say that? His voice is soft. You know why. He frowns as if weighing something in his mind. Oh, what is he thinking? Two gin and tonics, please, and some nuts and olives, he says to the steward, who nods and quickly vanishes. You think I'm going to punish you? Christian's voice is silky. Do you want to? Yes. How? I'll think of something, maybe when you've had your drink, and it's a, it's a, sen it's a sensual threat. <clears throat> and it's a sensual threat. I swallow, and my inner goddess squirts. Squints. <laughs> squirts. <laughs> I swallow, and my inner goddess squints from her sun lunge, where she's trying to catch rays with a silver reflector fanned out at her neck. Christian frowns once more. You want to be? How does he know? Depends, I mutter, flushing. On what? He hides his smile. If you want to hurt me or not. His mouth presses into a hard line, humor forgotten. He leans forward and kisses my forehead. Anastasia, you're my wife, not my sub. I don't ever want to hurt you. You should know that by now. Just, just don't take your clothes off in public. I don't want you naked all over the tabloids. You don't want that. And I'm sure your mom and Ray don't want that either. Oh, Ray, holy shit. He'd have a coronary. What was I thinking? I mentally chastised myself. The steward appears with our drinks and snacks and places them on the teak table. Sit, Christian commands. I do as he says and settle into a director's chair. Christian takes a seat beside me and passes me a gin and tonic. Cheers, Miss Gray. Cheers, Mr. Gray. I take a welcome sip. It's thirst quenching, quenching, cold and delicious. When I gaze at him, he's watching me carefully, his mood unreadable. It's very frustrating. I don't know if he's still mad at me. I deploy my patented dis distraction technique. Who owns this boat? I ask. A British knight, sir somebody or other. His great-grandfather started a grocery store. His daughter's married to one of the crown princes of Europe. Oh, super rich. Christian looks suddenly wary. Yes. Like you, I murmur. Yes. Oh. And like you, Christian whispers and pops an olive into his mouth. I blink rapidly. A vision of him in his tux and silver waistcoat comes to mind, his eyes burning with sincerity as he gazes down at me during our wedding ceremony. All that is mine is now yours, he says, his voice ringing out clearly, reciting his vows from memory. All mine? It's odd, going from nothing to... I wave my hand to indicate our opulent surroundings to everything. You'll get used to it. 
I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Taylor appears on deck. Sir, you have a call. Christian frowns but takes the proffered pro pro blackberry. Gray, he snaps, and rises from his seat to stand at the bow of the yacht. I gaze out at the sea, turning out his turning out his conversation with Ross, tuning out his conversation with Ross. I think his number two. I'm rich, stinking rich. I have done nothing to earn this money, just married a rich man. I shudder as my mind drifts back to our conversation about prenups. It was the Sunday after his birthday, and we were seated at the kitchen table enjoying a leisurely breakfast, all of us. Elliot, Kate, Grace, and I were debating the merits of baked bacon versus sausage, while Carrick and Christian read the Sunday paper. Look at this, squeals Mia as she sets her notebook on the kitchen table in front of us. There's a gossipy item on the Seattle News web site about you being engaged, Christian. Already? Grace says in surprise. Then her mouth purses as some obviously, as, as some obviously unpleasant thought crosses her mind. Christian frowns. Mia reads the column out loud. Where it has reached us here at the news that Seattle's most eligible bachelor, the Christian Gray, has finally been snapped up and wedding bells are in the air. But who is the lucky, lucky lady? The news is on the hunt, but she's reading one hell, hell of a lose, but she's reading one hell of a prenup. Mia giggles, then stops abruptly as Christian glares at her. Silence descends, and the atmosphere in the gray kitchen plunges into below zero. Oh no, a prenup. The thought has never crossed my mind. I swallow, feeling all the blood drain from my face. Please, ground. Swallow me up now. Christian shifts uncomfortably in his chair as I glance apprehensively at him. No, he mouths at me. Christian, Carrick says gently. I'm not discussing this again. He snaps at Carrick, who glances at me nervously and opens his mouth to say something. No prenup. Christian almost shouts at him and broodingly goes back to reading his paper, ignoring everyone else at the table. They look alternatively, alternatively at me and then him, then anywhere but at the two of us. Christian, I murmur, I'll sign anything you and Mr. Gray want. Geez, it wouldn't be the first time he's made me sign something. Christian looks up and glares at me. No, he snaps. I blanch once more. It's to protect you, Christian, Anna. I think you should discuss this in private, Grace admonishes us. She glares at Carrick and Mia. Oh, dear. Looks like they're in trouble, too. Anna, this is not about you, Carrick murmurs reassuringly. And please call me Carrick. Christian narrows cold eyes at his father, and my heart sinks. Hell, he's really mad. Everyone erupts into animated conversation, and Mia and Kate leap up to clear the table. I definitely prefer sausage, exclaims Elliot. I stare down at my knotted fingers. Crap. I hope Mr. and Mrs. Gray don't think I'm some kind of gold digger. Christian reaches over and grasps both my hands gently in one of his. Stop it. How does he know what I'm thinking? Ignore my dad. Christian says so only I can hear him. He's really pissed about Elena. That stuff was all aimed at me. I wish my mom had kept her mouth shut. I know Christian is still smarting from his talk with Carrick about Elena last night. He has a point, Christian. You were very wealthy, and I'm bringing your I'm bringing nothing to our marriage by my student loan, but my student loans. Christian gazes at me, his eyes bleak. Anastasia, if you leave me, you might as well take everything. You left me once before. I know how that feels. Holy fuck. That was different, I whisper, moved by his intensity. But you might want to leave me. The thought makes me sick. He snorts and shakes his head with mock disgust. Christian, you know I might do something exceptionally stupid, and you... I glanced down at my knotted hands, pain lancing through me, and I'm unable to finish my sentence, losing Christian. Fuck. Stop. Stop now. The subject is closed, Anna. We're not discussing it anymore. No prenup. Not now. Not ever. He gives me a pointed, give it up, look, now look, which silences me. Then he turns to Grace. Mom, he says, can we have the wedding here? And he's not mentioned it again. In fact, at every opportunity he's tried to reassure me about his wealth, that it's mine, too. I shudder as I recall the crazy shopping fest Christian demanded I go on with Caroline Acton, the personal shopper from Neiman Marcus, in preparation for this honeymoon. My bikini alone cost $540. I mean, it's nice, but really? That's a ridiculous amount of money for four triangular scraps of material. You'll get used to it. Christian interrupts my revere as he resumes his place at the table. Used to it? 
The money, he says, rolling his eyes. Oh, fifty, maybe with time. I push the small dish of salted almonds and cashews towards him. You're nuts, sir, I say with as straight a face as I can manage, trying to bring some humor to our conversation after my dark thoughts and my bikini top faux pas. He smirks, I'm nuts about you. He takes an almond, his eyes sparkling with wicked humor as he enjoys my little joke. He licks his lips. Drink up, we're going to bed. What? Drink, he mouths at me, his eyes darkening. Oh my. The look he gives me could be solely responsible for global warming. I pick up my gin and drink the, and drain the glass, not taking my eyes off him. His mouth drops open and I glimpse the tip of his tongue between his teeth. He smiles lewdly at me. In one fluid move, he stands and bends over me, resting his hands on the arms of my chair. I'm going to make an example of you. Come, don't pee. He whispers in my ear. I gasp, don't pee? How rude. My subconscious looks up from her book. The Complete Works of Charles Dickens, Volume 1, with alarm. It's not what you think. Christian smirks, holding his hand out to me. Trust me. He looks so sexy and genial. How can I resist? Okay. I place my hand in his, because, quite simply, I trust him with my life. What has he got planned? My heart starts pounding in anticipation. He leads me across the deck and through the doors into the plush, beautifully appointed main salon, along a narrow corridor through the dining room and down the stairs to the master cabin. The cabin has been cleaned since this morning and the bed made. It's a lovely room, with two portholes on both the starboard and port sides. It's elegantly decorated in dark walnut furniture and with cream walls and soft furnishings in gold and red. Christian releases my hand, pulls his t-shirt over his head, and tosses it onto a chair. He steps out of his flip-flops and removes his shorts and trunks in one graceful move. Oh my, will I ever tire of looking at him naked? He is utterly gorgeous and all mine. His skin glows. He's caught the sun, too, and his hair is longer, flopping over his forehead. I am one lucky, lucky girl. He grasps my chin, pulling slightly so that I stop biting my lip, and runs his thumb along my lower lip. That's better. He turns and strides over to the impressive armoire that houses his clothes. He produces two pairs of metal handcuffs and an airline eye mask from the bottom drawer. Handcuffs? We've never used handcuffs. I glance quickly and nervously at the bed. Where the hell is he going to attach those? He turns and gazes steadily at me, his eyes dark and luminous. These can be quite painful. They can bite into the skin if you pull too hard. He holds up one pair, but I really want to use them on you now. Holy fuck, my mouth goes dry. Here. He stalks gracefully forward and hands me a set. Do you want to try them first? They feel solid and the metal cold. Vaguely, I hope I never have to wear a pair of these for real. Christian is watching me intently. Where are the keys? My voice wavers. He holds out his palm, revealing a small metallic key. This does both sets. In fact, all sets. How many sets does he have? I don't remember seeing any in the mu museum chest. He strokes my cheek with his index finger, trailing it down to my mouth. He leans in as if to kiss me. Do you want to play? He says, his voice low, and everything in my body heads south as desire unfurls deep in my belly. Yes, I breathe. He smiles. Good. He plants a feather-like kiss on my forehead. We're going to need a safe word. What? Stop won't be enough because you will probably say that, but you won't mean it. He runs his nose down mine, the only contact between us. My heart starts pounding. Shit, how can he do this with just words? This is not going to hurt. It will be intense, very intense, because I'm not going to let you move, okay? Oh my, this sounds so hot. My breathing is too loud. Fuck, I am panting already. Thank heavens I'm married to this man, otherwise this would be embarrassing. My eyes flick down to his arousal. Okay, my voice is barely audible. Choose a word, Anna. Oh, a safe word, he says softly. Popsicle, I say, panting. Popsicle? He says, amused. Yes. He grins as he leans back to gaze down at me. Interesting choice. Lift up your arms. I do, and Christian grasps the hem of my sundress, lifts it over my head, and tosses it on the floor. He holds out his hand, and I give him back the handcuffs. He places both sets on the bedside table along with the blindfold and yanks the quilt off the bed, letting it fall to the floor. Turn around. I turn, and he undoes my bikini top so that it falls to the floor. Tomorrow I will staple this to you. He mutters and tugs on my hair tie, fee freeing my hair. He gathers it into one hand and yanks gently so I step back against him, against his chest, against his erection. I gasp as he pulls my head to one side and kisses my neck. You were very disobedient. He murmurs in my ear, sending delicious shivers through me. Yes, I whisper. Hmm, what are we going to do about that? Learn to live with it, I breathe. 
His soft, languid kisses are driving me wild. He grins against my neck. Ah, Miss Gray, you are ever the optimist. He straightens, taking my hair. He carefully parts it into three strands, braids it slowly, and then fastens my hair tied to the end. He tugs my braid gently and leans down, in my, leans down to my ear. I am going to teach you a lesson, he murmurs. Moving suddenly, he grabs me by the waist, sits down on the bed, and yanks me across his knee so that I feel his erection press against my belly. He smacks my backside once, hard. I yelp, and then I'm on my back on the bed, and he's gazing down at me, his eyes molten gray. I'm going to combust. Do you know how beautiful you are? He trails his fingertips up my thigh so that I tingle everywhere. Without taking his eyes off me, he gets up from the bed and gathers both sets of handcuffs. He grasps my left leg and snaps one cuff, cuff around my ankle. Oh. Lifting my right leg, he repeats the process so I have a pair of handcuffs attached to each ankle. I still have no idea where he's going to attach them. Sit up, he orders, and I comply immediately. Now hug your knees. I blink at him, then draw my legs up so they are bent in front of me and wrap my arms around them. He reaches down, lifts my chin, and plants a soft, wet kiss on my lips before slipping the blindfold over my eyes. I can see nothing. All I can hear is my rapid breathing and the sound of the water lapping against the sides of the yacht as she bobs gently on the sea. Oh my, I'm so aroused already. What's the safe word, Anastasia? Popsicle. Good. Taking my left hand, he snaps a cuff around my wrist, then repeats the process with my right. My left hand is tied to my left ankle, my right hand to my right leg. I cannot straighten my legs. Holy fuck. Now, Christian breathes, I'm going to fuck you till you scream. What? And all the air leaves my body. He grasps both of my heels and tips me back so that I fall backward on the bed. I have no choice but to keep my legs bent. The cuffs tighten as I pull against them. He's right. They cut into me almost to the pain point of pain. This feels weird, being trussed up and helpless on a boat. He pulls my ankles apart and I groan. He kisses my inner thigh and I want to squirm beneath him, but I can't. I have no purchase to move my hips. My feet are suspended. I cannot move. You're going to have to absorb all the pleasure, Anastasia. No moving. He murmurs as he crawls up my body, kissing me along the edge of my bikini bottoms. He pulls the strings on each side. The scraps of material fall away. I am now naked at his, and at his mercy. He kisses my belly, nipping my navel with his teeth. Ugh, I sigh. This is going to be tough. I had no idea. He traces soft kisses and little bites up to my breasts. Shh, he soothes. You're so beautiful, Anna. I groan, frustrated. Normally I'd be grinding my hips, responding to his touch with a rhythm of my own, but I cannot move. I moan, pulling on my restraints. The metal bites into my skin. Ugh! I cry, but I really don't care. You drive me crazy, he whispers, so I'm going to drive you crazy. He's resting on me now, his weight on his elbows, and he turns his attention to my breasts, biting, sucking, rolling my, rolling my nipples between his fingers and thumbs, driving me wild. He doesn't stop. It's maddening. Oh, please... His erection pushes against me. Christian, I beg, and feel his triumphant smile against my skin. Shall I make you come this way? He murmurs against my nipple, causing it to harden some more. You know I can. He suckles me hard, and I cry out, pleasure lancing from my chest directly to my groin. I pull helplessly on the cuff, swamped by the sensation. Yes, I whimper. Oh, baby, that would be too easy. Oh, please. Shh. His teeth scrape my chin as he trails his lips to my mouth, and I gasp. He kisses me. His skilled tongue invades my mouth, tasting, exploring, dominating, but my tongue meets his challenge, writhing against his. He tastes of cool gin and Christian gray, and he smells of the sea. He grasps my chin, holding my head in place. Still, baby, I want you still. He whispers against my mouth. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh no, Anna, you'll feel more this way. And agonizingly, slowly, he flexes his hips, push, pushes part way into me. I would normally tilt my pelvis up to meet him, but I can't move. He withdraws. Ah, Christian, please. Again, he teases his voice hoarse. Christian! He pushes fractionally into me again, then withdraws while kissing me, his fingers tugging at my nipple. It's pleasure overload. No! Do you want me, Anastasia? Yes, I beg. Tell me, he murmurs, his breathing harsh, and he teases me once more, in and out. I want you, I whimper, please. I hear his soft sigh against my ear, and have me you will, Anastasia. He rears up and slams into me. I scream, tilting my head back, pulling on the restraints as he hits my sweet spot, and I am all this and, and I am all sensation everywhere, a sweet, sweet agony, and I cannot move. He stills, then circles his hips, and the motion radiates deep inside me. Why do you defy me, Anna? Christian, stop. 
He circles deep inside me again, ignoring my plea, easing out slowly and then slamming into me again. Tell me, why? He hisses, and I'm vaguely aware that it's through gritted teeth. I cry out in an in in incoherent wail. This is too much. Tell me. Christian. Anna, I need to know. He slams into me again, thrusting so deep and I'm building. The feeling is so intense it swamps me, spiraling out from deep within my belly to each limb, to each biting metal restraint. I don't know! I cry out. Because I can. Because I love you. Please, Christian. He groans loudly and thrusts deep again and again, over and over, and I'm lost, trying to absorb the pleasure. It's mind-blowing, body-blowing. I long to straighten my legs, to control my inter imminent orgasm, but I can't. I'm helpless. I'm his, just his, to do with as he wills. Tears spring to my eyes. This is too intense. I can't stop him. I don't want to stop him. I want, I want, I know, oh no, I, this is too... That's it, Christian growls. Feel it, baby. I detonate around him, again and again, round and round, screaming loudly as my orgasm rips me apart, scorching through me like wildfire, consuming everything. I'm wrung ragged, tears streaming down my face, my body left pulsing and shaking, and I'm aware that Christian kneels, still inside me, pulling me upright onto his lap. He clutches my head with one hand and my back with the other, and he comes violently inside me while my insides continue to tremble after af with aftershocks. It's draining. It's exhausting. It's hell. It's heaven. It's Hinduism wi gone wild. Christian tears off the blindfold and kisses me. He kisses my eyes, my nose, my cheeks. He kisses away the tears, clutching my face between his hands. I love you, Miss Gray. He breathes. Even though you make me so mad, I feel so alive with you. I don't have the energy to open either my eyes or my mouth to respond. Very gently, he lays me back on the bed and eases out of me. I mouth some wordless protest. He climbs off the bed and undoes the handcuffs. When I'm free, he gently rubs my wrists and ankles, then lies down beside me again, pulling me into his arms. I stretch out my legs. Oh, my, that feels so good. I feel good. That was, without a doubt, the most intense climax I have ever endured. Hmm, a Christian Grey Fifty Shades punishment fuck? I must really, I really must behave more often. A pressing need from my bladder wakes me. When I open my eyes, I'm disoriented. It's dark outside. Where am I? London? Paris? Oh, the boat. I feel her pitch and roll and hear the quiet hum of the engines. We're on the move. How odd. Christian is beside me, working on his laptop, casually dressed in white linen shirt and chino trousers, his feet bare. His hair is still wet, and I can smell his body wash fresh from the shower and Christian smell. And his Christian smell. Hmm. Hi, he murmurs, gazing down at me, his eyes warm. Hi. I smile, feeling suddenly shy. How long have I been asleep? Just an hour or so. We're moving. I figured since we ate out last night and went to the ballet and the casino that we'd dine on board tonight. A quiet night adieu. I grin at him. Where are we going? Canes. Okay. I stretch, feeling stiff. No amount of training with Claude could have prepared me for this afternoon. I rise gingerly, needing the bathroom. Grabbing my silk robe, I hastily put it on. Why am I so shy? I feel Christian's eyes on me. When I glance at him, he returns to his laptop, his, his brow furrowed. As I absentmindedly wash my hands at the vanity unit, recalling last night at the casino, my robe falls open. I stare at myself in the mirror, shocked. Holy fuck. What has he done to me? <clears throat> Chapter 3 I gaze in horror at the red marks all over my breasts. Hickeys. I have hickeys. I am married to one of the most respected businessmen in the United States, and he's given me goddamn hickeys. How did I not feel him doing this to me? I flush. The fact is, I know exactly why. Mr. Orgasmic was using his fine motor sexing skills on me. My subconscious peers over her half-moon specks and tuts disapprovingly, while my inner goddess slumbers on her chaise lounge, out for the count. I gape at my reflection. My wrists have red welts around them from the handcuffs. No doubt they'll bruise. I examine my ankles. More welts. Holy hell. I look like I've been in some sort of accident. I gaze at myself, trying to absorb how I look. My body is so different these days. It's changed subtly since I've known him. I've become leaner and fitter, and my hair is glossy and well cut. My nails are manicured, my feet pedicured, my eyebrows threaded and beautifully shaped. For the first time in my life, I'm well groomed, except for these hideous love bites. I don't want to think about grooming at the moment. I'm too mad. How dare he mark me like this, like some teenager. In the short time we've been together, he's never given me hickeys. I look like hell. I know why he's done this. Damn control freak. Right. My subconscious folds her arms beneath her small bosom. He's gone too far this time. I stalk out of the ensuite bathroom and walk to the, into the walk-in closet, carefully avoiding even a glance in his direction. Slipping out of my robe, I pull on my sweatpants and a camisole. I undo the braid, pick up a hairbrush from the small vanity unit, and brush out my tangles.
Anastasia. Christian calls and I hear his anxiety. Are you okay? I ignore him. Am I okay? No, I'm not okay. After what he's done to me, I doubt I'll be able to wear a, a, a swimsuit, let alone one of my ridiculously expensive bikinis, for the rest of our honeymoon. The thought is suddenly so infuriating. How dare he? I'll give him a, are you okay? I see this fury spikes through me. I can behave like an adolescent, too. Stepping back into the bedroom, I hurl the hairbrush at him, turn, and leave, though not before I see his shocked expression and his lightning reaction as he raises his arm to protect his head so that the brush bounces ineffectively off his forearm and onto the bed. I storm out of the cabin, bolt upstairs and out on deck, fleeing toward the bow. I need some space to calm down. It's dark and the air is balmy. The warm breeze carries the smell of the Mediterranean and the scent of jasmine and bougainvillea. From the shore, the fair lady glides effortlessly through the calm coal boat sea as I rest my elbows on the wooden railing, gazing at the distant shore where tiny lights wink and twinkle. I take a deep, healing breath and slowly begin to calm. I'm aware of him behind me before I hear him. You're mad at me, he whispers. No shit, Sherlock. How mad? Scale of one to ten, I think I'm a fifty, apt, huh? That mad. He sounds suppressed, surprised and impressed at once. Yes, push to violence, man, I say through gritted teeth. He stays silent as I turn and scowl at him, watching me with wide and wary eyes. I know from his expression and because he's made no move to touch me that he's out of his depth. Christian, you have to stop un unilaterally trying to bring me to heel. You made your point on the beach, very effectively, as I recall. He shrugs min minutely. Well, you won't take your top off again. He murmurs petulantly. And this justifies what he's done to me? I glare at him. I don't like you leaving marks on me. Well, not this many, anyway. It's a hard limit, I hiss at him. I don't like you taking your clothes off in public. That's a hard limit for me, he growls. I think we've established that, I hiss through my teeth. Look at me! I pull down my camisole to reveal the top of my breast. Christian gazes at me, his eyes not leaving my face, his expression wary and uncertain. He's not used to seeing me this mad. Can't, can't he see what he's done? Can't he see how ridiculous he is? I want to shout at him, but I refrain. I don't want to push him too far. Heaven knows what he'd do. Eventually, he sighs and holds his palms up in a resigned, conciliatory gesture. Okay, he says, his voice placating. I get it. Hallelujah. Good. He runs his hand through his hair. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me. Finally, he looks contrite, using my own words back at me. You were such an adolescent sometimes, I scold him, mullishly. But the fight has gone out of my voice, and he knows it. He steps closer and tentatively raises his hand to tuck my hair behind my ear. I know, he acknowledges softly. I have a lot to learn. Dr. Flynn's words come back to me. Emotionally, Christian is an adolescent, Anna. He, has, he bypassed that phase in his life totally. He's channeled all of his energies into succeeding in the business world. And he has beyond all, he has beyond all expectations. His emotional world has to play catch-up. My heart thaws a little. We both do. I sigh and cautiously raise my hand, placing it over his heart. He doesn't flinch like he used to, but he stiffens. He rests his hand over mine and smiles his shy smile. I've just learned that you have a good arm and a good aim, Miss Gray. I would never have figured that, but then I constantly underestimate you. You always surprise me. I arch my eyebrow at him. Target practice with Ray. I can throw and shoot straight, Mr. Gray, and you do well to remember that. I will endeavor to do that, Miss Gray, or ensure that all potential projectile objects are nailed down and that you don't have access to a gun. He smirks. I smirk back, narrowing my eyes. I'm resourceful. That you are. He whispers and releases my hand to circle his arms around me. Pulling me into an embrace, he buries his nose in my hair. I wrap my arms around him, holding him close, and feel the tension leave his body as he nuzzles me. Am I forgiven? Am I? I feel his smile. Yes, he answers. Ditto. We stand holding each other, my peak forgotten. He does smell good, adolescent or not. How can I resist him? Hungry? He says after a while. I have my eyes closed and my head against his chest. Yes, famished. All the er, activity has given me an appetite, but I'm not dressed for dinner. I'm sure my sweatpants and camisole would be frowned upon in the dining room. You look good to me, Anastasia. Besides, it's our boat for the week. We can dress how we like. Think of it as dress down Tuesday on the Côte d'Azur. Anyway, I thought we'd eat on deck. Yes, I'd like that. He kisses me, an earnest forgive-me kiss. Then we wander hand in hand toward the bow. The bow. Bow? Whatever. Where our gazpacho awaits. The steward serves our creme brulee and discreetly retires. Why do you always braid my hair? 
I asked Christian out of curiosity. We're sitting adjacent to each other at the table, my lower leg curled around his. He pauses as he's about to pick up his des dessert spoon and frowns. I don't want your hair catching in anything, he says quietly, and for a moment he's lost in thought. Habit, I think, he muses. Suddenly he frowns and his eyes widen, his pupils dilating with alarm. What's he remembered? It's something painful, some early childhood memory, I guess. I don't want to remind him of that. Leaning over, I put my index finger over his lips. No, it doesn't matter. I don't need to know. I was just curious. I give him a warm, reassuring smile. His look is wary, but after a moment, he visibly relaxes, his relief evident. I lean over to kiss the corner of his mouth. I love you, I murmur, and he smiles his heart-achingly shy smile, and I melt. I will always love you, Christian. And I you, he says softly. In spite of my disobedience, I raise my eyebrow. Because of your disobedience, Anastasia. He grins. I crack my spoon through the burned sugar crust of my dessert and shake my head. Will I ever understand this man? Hmm. This creme brulee is delicious. Once the steward has cleared our dessert plates, Christian reaches for the bottle of rosé and fills my glass. I check that we're alone and ask, What's with the no going to the bathroom thing? You really want to know? He half smiles, his eyes alight with a salacious gleam. Do I? I gaze at him through my lashes as I tip a, take a sip of my wine. The fuller your bladder, the more intense your orgasm, Anna. I blush. Oh, I see. Holy cow, that explains a lot. He grins, looking far too knowing. Will I always be on the back foot with Mr. Sexpertise? Yes, well. I desperately hunt. Oh, yes, well, I desperately hunt around for a change of subject. He takes pity on me. What do you want to do for the rest of the evening? He cocks his head to one side and gives me his lopsided grin. Whatever you want, Christian. Put your theory to the test again, I shrug. I shrug. I know what I want to do, he murmurs. Grabbing his glass of wine, he rises and holds his hand out to me. Come. I take his hand and he leads me into the main salon. His iPod is in the speaker dock on the dresser. He switches it on and selects a song. Dance with me. He pulls me into his arms. If you insist, I insist, Miss Gray. A slinky, cheesy melody starts. Is this a Latin rhythm? Christian grins down at me and starts to move, sweeping me off my feet and taking me with him around the salon. A man with a voice like warm melted caramel croons. It's a song I know but can't place. Christian dips me low and I yelp in surprise and giggle. He smiles, his eyes filled with humor. Then he scoops me up and spins me under his arm. You dance so well, I say. It's like I can dance. He gives me a sphinx-like smile but says nothing, and I wonder if it's because he's thinking of her, Miss Robinson, the woman who taught him how to dance and how to fuck. She hasn't crossed my mind for a while. Christian has not mentioned her since his birthday, and as far as I'm aware, their business relationship is over. Reluctantly, though, I have to admit she was some teacher. He dips me low again and plants a swift kiss on my lips. I mi I'd miss your love, I murmur, echoing the lyrics. I'd more than miss your love. He says and spins me once more. Then he sings his words softly in my ear, making me swoon. The track ends and Christian gazes down at me, his eyes dark and luminous, all humor gone, and I'm suddenly breathless. Come to bed with me? He whispers, and it's a heartfelt plea that tugs at my heart. Christian, you had me at I do, two and a half weeks ago. I know this is his way of apologizing and making sure all is well between us after our spat. When I wake, the sun is shining through the portholes and the water reflects shimmering patterns onto the cabin ceiling. Christian is nowhere to be seen. I stretch out and smile. Hmm. I'll take a punishment fuck followed, followed by makeup sex any day. I marvel at what is too good. What is too go? Wait. I marvel at what it is to go to bed with two different men. Angry Christian and sweet let me make it up to you in any way I can, Christian. It's tricky to decide which of them I like best. I rise and head for the bathroom. Opening the door, I find Christian inside shaving, naked except for a towel wrapped around his waist. He turns and beams, not phased that I'm interrupting him. I have discovered that Christian will never lock the door if he is the only person in the room. The reason is sobering and not one I want to dwell on. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Miss Gray. He says, radiating his good mood. Good morning yourself. I grin back as I watch him shave. I love watching him shave. He pulls up his chin and shaves beneath it taking long, deliberate strokes, and I find myself unconsciously mirroring his actions, pulling my upper lip down, just as he does, to shave his finthrum, filthrum. He turns and smirks at me, one half of his face still covered in shaving soap. Enjoying the show? He asks. Oh, Christian, I could watch you for hours. 
One of my all-time favorites, I murmur, and he leans down and kisses me quickly, smearing shaving soap on my face. Shall I do this to you again? He whispers wickedly and holds up the razor. I purse my lips at him. No, I mutter, pretending to sulk. I'll wax next time. I remember Christian's joy in London when he discovered that during his one meeting there, I'd shaved off my pubic hair out of curiosity. Of course, I hadn't done it to Mr. Exacting High Standards. What the hell have you done? Christian exclaims. He cannot keep his, for his horrified amusement to himself. He sits up in bed in our suite at Brown Brown's Hotel near Piccadilly, switches on the bedside light and gazes down at me, his mouth a startled O. Oh. It must be midnight. I blush the color of the sheets in the playroom and try to pull down my satin nightdress so he can't see. He grabs my hand to stop me. Anna. I er, shaved. I can see that. Why? He's grinning from ear to ear. I cover my face with my hands. Why am I so embarrassed? Hey, he says softly and pulls my hands away. Don't hide. He's biting his lips so that he won't laugh. Tell me, why? His eyes dance with mer merriment. Why does he find this so funny? Stop laughing at me. I'm not laughing at you. I'm sorry. I'm delighted, he says. Oh, tell me why. I take a deep breath. This morning, after you left for your meeting, I took a shower and was remembering all your rules. He blinks. The humor in his expression has vanished and he regards me cautiously. And I was taking them off one by one and how I felt about them. And I remembered the beauty salon and I thought, this is what you'd like. I wasn't brave enough to get a wax. My voice disappears into a whisper. He stares at me, his eyes glowing, this time not with a mirth at my folly, but with love. Oh, Anna, he breathes. He leans down and kisses me tenderly. You beguile me. He whispers against my lips and kisses me once more, clasping my face in both his hands. After a, breath a breathless moment, he pulls back and leans up on one elbow, the humorous back. I think I should do a thorough inspection of your handiwork, Miss Gray. What? No. He has to be kidding. I cover myself, protecting my recently deforested area. Oh, no, you don't, Anastasia. He grasps my hands and pries them away, moving nimbly, so he's between my legs and pinning my hands to my sides. He gives me a scorching look that could light, light dry tender, but before I combust, he bends and skims his lips down my naked belly, directly to my sex. I squirm beneath him, reluctantly resigned to my fate. Well, what have we here? Christian plants a kiss where, until this morning, I had pubic hair, then scrapes his bristly chin across me. Ah! I exclaim. Wow, that's sensitive. Christian's eyes dart to mine, full of sal salacious longing. I think you missed a bit. He mutters and tugs gently right, un right underneath. Oh, damn. I mutter, hoping this will put an end to his frankly intrusive scrutiny. I have an idea. He leaps naked out of bed and heads to the bathroom. What on earth is he doing? He returns moments later, carrying a glass of water, a mug, my razor, his shaving brush, soap, and a towel. He puts the water brush, soap, and razor on the bedside table and gazes down at me holding the towel. Oh, no. My subconscious slams down her complete works of Charles Dickens, leaps up from her armchair, and puts his hands on her hips. No, 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 I squeak. Miss Gray, if it's a job worth doing, it's worth doing well. Lift your hips. His eyes glow, summer storm gray. Christian, you are not shaving me. He tilts his head to one side. Why ever not? I flush. Isn't it obvious? Because it's just too... Intimate, he whispers. Anna, I crave intimacy with you. You know that. Besides, after some of the things we've done, don't get all squeamish on me now. And I know this part of your body better than you do. I gape at him. Of all the arrogant, true, he does, but still. It's just wrong. My voice is prissy and whiny. This isn't wrong. This is hot. Hot? Really? This turns you on? I can't keep the astonishment out of my voice. He snorts. Can't you tell? He glances down at his, ar at his arousal. I want to shave you, he whispers. Oh, what the hell. I lie back, throwing my arm over my face so I don't have to watch. If it makes you happy, Christian, go ahead. You are so kinky, I mutter, as I lift my hips and he slips the towel beneath me. He kisses my inner thigh. Oh, baby, how right you are. I hear the slosh of water as he dips the shaving brush in the glass of water, then the soft swirl of the brush in the mug. He grasps my left ankle and parts my legs, and the bed dips as he sits between my legs. I'd really like to tie you up right now, he murmurs. I promise to keep still. Good. I gasp as he runs the lathered brush over my pubic bone. It's warm. The water in the glass must be hot. I squirm a little. It tickles, but in a good way. Don't move. Christian admonishes and applies the brush again. Or I will tie you down. He adds darkly, and a delicious shiver runs down my spine. 
Have you done this before? I ask tentatively when he reaches for the razor. No. Oh, good. I grin. Another first, Miss Gray. Hmm, I like firsts. Me too. Here goes. And with a gentleness that surprises me, he runs the razor over my sensitive flesh. Keep still, he says distractedly, and I know he's concentrating hard. It's only a matter of minutes before he grabs the towel and wipes all the excess lather off me. There, that's more like it. He muses, and I finally lift my arm to look at him as he sits back to admire his handiwork. Happy? I ask, my voice hoarse. Very. He grins wickedly and slowly eases a finger inside me. But that was fun, he says, his eyes gently mocking. For you, maybe. I try to pout, but he's right. It was. Arousing. I seem to recall the aftermath was very satisfying. Christian returns to finishing his shave. I glance quickly down at my fingers. Yes, it was. I had no idea that the absence of pubic hair could make such a difference. Hey, I'm just teasing. Isn't that what husbands who are hopelessly in love with their wives do? Christian tips my chin up and gazes at me, his eyes suddenly filled with apprehension as he endeavors to read my expression. Hmm, payback time. Sit, I mutter. He stares, not understanding. I push him gently toward the lone white stool in the bathroom. Perplexed, he sits down, and I take the razor from him. Anna, he warns. As he realizes my intention, I lean down and kiss him. Head back, I whisper. He hesitates. Tit for tat, Mr. Gray. He stares at me with wary, amused disbelief. You know what you're doing? He asks, his voice low. I shake my head slowly, deliberately, trying to look as serious as possible. He closes his eyes and shakes his head, then tilts it back in surrender. Holy shit, he's going to let me shave him? Tentatively, I slide my hand into the damp hair at his forehead, gripping tightly to hold him still. He clenches his eyes closed and parts his lips as he inhales. Very gently, I stroke his razor up from his neck to his chin, revealing a path of skin beneath the lather. Christian exhales. Did you think I was going to hurt you? I never know what you're going to do, Anna, but no, not intentionally. I run the razor up his neck again, clearing a wider path in the lather. I would never intentionally hurt you, Christian. He opens his eyes and circles his arms around me as I gently drag the razor down his cheek from the bottom of his sideburn to the bottom of his, from the bottom of his sideburn. I know, he says, angling his face so I can shave the rest of his cheek. Two more strokes and I finished. All done and not a drop of blood spilled. I grin proudly. He runs his hand up my leg so that my nightdress rides up my thigh and pulls, up on, pulls me onto his lap so that I'm astride him. I steady myself with my hands on his upper arms. He's really very muscular. Can I take you somewhere today? No sunbathing? I arch a caustic brow at him. He licks his lips nervously. No, no sunbathing today. I thought you might prefer something else. Well, since you've covered me in hickeys and effectively put the kibosh on that, sure, why not? Wisely, he chooses to ignore my tone. It's a drive, but it's worth a visit from what I've read. My dad recommended we visit. It's a hilltop village called St. Paul de Vence. There are some galleries there. I thought we could pick out some paintings or sculptures for the new house, if we find anything we like. I lean back and gaze at him. Art. He wants to buy art? How can I buy art? What? He asks. I know nothing about art, Christian. He shrugs and smiles at me indulgently. We'll buy only what we like. This isn't about investment. Investment? Jeez. What? He says again. I shake my head. Look, I know we only got the architect's drawings the other day, but there's a, no harm in, but there's no harm in looking, and the town is an ancient medieval place. Hmm, I wonder if that was him or her reading. Whatever. Oh, the architect. He had to remind me of her. Gia... Mateo, a friend of Elliot's who worked on Christian's place in Aspen. During our meeting, she's been all over Christian like a rash. What now? Christian exclaims. I shake my head. Tell me, he urges. How can I tell him that I don't like Gia? My dislike is irrational. I don't want to come across as a jealous wife. You're not still mad about what I did yesterday, he sighs and nuzzles his face between my breasts. No, I'm hungry, I mutter, knowing full well that this will distract him from the line of questioning. Why didn't you say so? He eases me off his lap and stands. St. Paul de Vence is a fortified medieval hilltop village, one of the most picturesque places I have ever seen. I stroll arm in arm with Christian through the narrow cobblestone streets with my hand in the back pocket of his shorts. Taylor and either Gaston or Philippe, I can't tell the difference between them, trail behind us. We pass a tree-covered square where three old men, one wearing a traditional beret, beret in spite of the heat, are playing 
bowls. It's quite crowded with tourists, but I feel comfortable tucked under Christian's arm. There is so much to see, little alleys and passageways leading to courtyards with intricate stone fountains, ancient and modern sculptures, and fascinating little boutiques and shops. In the first gallery, Christian gazes dis distractedly at the erotic photographs in front of us, sucking gently on the arm of his aviator specs. They are the work of Florence Diel, naked women in various poses. Not quite what I had in mind, I mumble disapprovingly. They make me think of the box of photographs I found in his closet, our closet. I wonder if he ever did destroy them. Me neither, Christian says, grinning down at me. He takes my hand and we stroll to the next artist. Idly, I wonder if I should let him take photos of me. The next display is by a female painter who specializes in still lifes. Fruit and vegetables, super close up and in rich, glorious color. I like those. I pointed through paintings of peppers. They remind me of you chopping vegetables in my apartment. I giggle. Christian's mouth, Christian's mouth twists as he tries and fails to hide his amusement. I thought I managed that quite competently, he mutters. I was just a bit slow, and anyway. He pulls me into an embrace. You were distracting me. Where would you put them? What? Christian is nuzzling my ear. The paintings. Where would you put them? He bites my earlobe, and I feel it in my groin. Kitchen, I murmur. Hmm, nice idea, Miss Gray. I squinted the price. 5,000 euros each. Holy shit. They're really expensive, I gasp. So? He nuzzles me again. Get used to it, Anna. He releases me and saunters over to the desk, where a young woman dressed entirely in white is gaping at him. I want to roll my eyes, but turn my attention back to the paintings. 5,000 euros. Jeez. We have finished lunch and are relaxing over coffee at the Hotel Le Saint Paul. The view of the surrounding countryside is stunning. Vineyards and fields of sunflowers form a patchwork across the plain, interspersed here and there with neat little French farmhouses. It's such a clear, beautiful day, we can see all the way to the sea, glinting fairly on the faintly on the horizon. Christian interrupts my revere. You ask me why I braid your hair, he murmurs. His tone alarms me. He looks guilty. Yes? Oh, shit. The crack whore used to let me play with her hair, I think. I don't know if it's a memory or a dream. Whoa, his birth mom? He gazes at me, his expression unreadable. My heart leaps into my mouth. What do I say when he says things like this? I like it when you play with my hair. My voice is hesitant. He regards me with uncertainty. Do you? Yes, it's the truth. I grasp his hand. I think you loved your birth mother, Christian. His eyes widen and he stares at me impassively, saying nothing. Holy shit, have I gone too far? Say something, Fifty, please. But he remains resolutely mute, resolutely mute, gazing at me with fathomless gray eyes while the silence stretches between us. He looks lost. He glances down at my hand on his and he frowns. Say something, I whisper, because I cannot bear the silence any longer. He shakes his head, exhaling deep. Let's go. He releases my hand and stands, his expression guarded. Have I overstepped the mark? I have no idea. My heart sinks and I don't know whether to say anything else or just let it go. I decide on the latter and follow him dutifully out of the restaurant. In the lovely narrow street, he takes my hand. Where do you want to go? He speaks, and he's not mad at me. Thank heavens. I exhale, relieved, and shrug. I'm just glad you're still speaking to me. You know I don't like talking about all that shit. It's done. Finished. He says quietly. No, Christian, it isn't. The thought saddens me, and for the first time I wonder if it will ever be finished. He'll always be Fifty Shades, my Fifty Shades. Do I want him to change? No, not really. Only in so far as I want him to feel loved. Picking up at him, peeking up at him, I take a moment to admire his captivating beauty, and he's mine. And it's not just the allure of his fine, fine face and his body that has me spellbound. It's what's behind the perfection that draws me, that calls to me, his fragile, damaged soul. He gives me that look, down his nose, half amused, half wary, wholly sexy, then tucks me under his arm, and we make our way through the tourist tor tourists toward the spot where Philippe Gaston, or Gaston has parked the roomy Mercedes. I slip my hand back into the back pocket of Christian's shorts, grateful that he isn't mad. But honestly, what four-year-old child doesn't love his mom, no matter how bad a mom she is? I sigh heavily and hug him closer. I know behind us the security team lurks, and I wonder idly if they've eaten. Christian stops outside a small boutique selling fine jewelry and gazes in the window, then down at me. He grasps my free hand and runs his thumb across the faded red line of the handcuff mark, inspecting it. It's not sore, I reassure him. He twists so that my other hand is freed from his pocket. He clasps that hand, too, gently turning it over to examine my wrist. The Platinum Omega watch he gave me at breakfast on our first morning in London obscures the red line. The inscription still makes me swoon. Anastasia, you are my love, my life, my...
you are, no. Anastasia, you are my more, my love, my life, Christian. In spite of everything, all his fiftiness, my husband can be so romantic. I gaze down at the faint marks of my wrist. Then again, he can be savage sometimes. Releasing my left hand, he tilts my chin up with his fingers and scrutinizes my expression, his eyes troubled. They don't hurt, I repeat. He pulls my hand to his lips and plants a soft, apologetic kiss on the inside of my wrist. Come, he says, and leads me into the shop. Here. Christian holds open the platinum bracelet he's just purchased. It's exquisite, so delicately crafted, the filigree in the shape of small abstract flowers with small diamonds at their hearts. It fa he fastens it around my wrist. It's wide and cuff-like and hides the red marks. It also costs 30,000 euros. I think, though, I couldn't really follow the conversation in French with the sales assistant. I have never worn anything so expensive. There, that's better, he murmurs. Better? I whisper, gazing into luminous gray eyes, conscious that the stick-thin sales assistant is staring at us with a jealous and disapproving look. You know why, Christian says uncertainly. I don't need this. I shake my wrist and the cuff moves. It catches the afternoon light streaming through the boutique window and small sparkling rainbows dance off the diamonds all over the walls of the store. I do, he says with utter sincerity. Why? Why does he need this? Does he feel guilty? About what? The marks? His birth mother? Not confiding in me? Oh, fifty. No, Christian, you don't. You've given me so much already. A magical honeymoon, London, Paris, the, the Côte d'Azur, and you. I'm a very lucky girl, I whisper, and his eyes soften. No, Anastasia, I'm a very lucky man. Thank you. Stretching up on my tiptoes, I put my arm around his neck and kiss him. Not for giving me the bracelet, but for being mine. Back in the car, he's introspective, gazing out at the fields of bright sunflowers, their heads following and basking in the afternoon sun. One of the twins, I think it's Gaston, is driving and Taylor is beside him up front. Christian is brooding about something. I clasp his hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. He glances at me before releasing my hand and caressing my knee. I'm wearing a short, full blue and white skirt and a blue fitted sleeveless shirt. Christian hesitates and I don't know if his hand is going to travel up my thigh or down my leg. I tense with anticipation at the gentle touch of his fingers and my breath catches. What's he going to do? He chooses down, suddenly grasping my ankle and pulling my foot onto his lap. I swivel my backside so I'm facing him in the back seat of the car. I want the other one, too. I glance nervously toward Taylor and Gaston, whose eyes are res resolutely on the road ahead, and place my other foot in on his lap. His eyes cool, he reaches over and presses a button located on his door. In front of us, a lightly tinted privacy screen slides out of a panel, and ten seconds later we are effectively on our own. Wow, no wonder the back of this car has so much leg room. I want to look at your ankles. Christian offers his quiet explanation. His gaze is anxious. The cuff marks? Geez, I thought we dealt with this. If there are marks, they are hidden by my sandal straps. I don't recall seeing any this morning. Gently, he strokes his thumb up my right instep, making me wiggle. A smile plays on his lips, and deftly he undoes one strap, and his smile fades as he's confronted with the darker red marks. Doesn't hurt, I murmur. He glances at me and his expression is sad, his mouth a thin line. He nods once as if he's taking me at my word while I shake my sandal loose so it falls to the floor, but I know I've lost him. He's distracted and brooding again, mechanically caressing my foot while he turns away to gaze out the car window once more. Hey, what did you expect? I ask softly. He glances at me and shrugs. I didn't expect to feel like I do looking at these marks. He says, oh... Reticent one minute and forthcoming the next. How, Fifty? How can I keep up with him? How do you feel? Bleak eyes gaze at me. Uncomfortable, he murmurs. Oh, no. I unbuckle my seatbelt and scoot closer to him, leaving my feet in his lap. I want to crawl into his lap and hold him, and I would if it, weren't just Taylor in the fr if it were just Taylor in the front. But knowing Gaston is there cramps my style despite the partition. If only it were darker, I clutch his hands. It's the hickeys I don't like, I whisper. Everything else? What you did? I lower my voice even further. With the handcuffs? I enjoyed that. Well, more than enjoyed. It was mind-blowing. You can do that to me again any time. He shifts in his seat. Mind-blowing? My inner goddess looks up, startled from her Jackie Collins. Yes, I grin. I flex my toes into his hardening crotch and see rather than hear his sharp intake of breath, his lips parting. You should really be wearing your seatbelt, Miss Gray. 
His voice is low, and I curl my toes around him once more. He inhales, and his eyes darken, and he clasps my ankle in warning. Does he want me to stop? Continue? He pauses, scowls, and fishes his ever-present blackberry out of his pocket to take an incoming call while glancing at his watch. His frown deepens. Barney? He snaps. Crap. Work interrupting us again. I try to remove my feet, but he tightens his fingers around my ankle. In the server room, he says in disbelief. Did it activate the fire suppression system? Fire? I take my feet off his lap, and this time he lets me. I sit back in my seat, buckle my seatbelt, and fiddle nervously with the 30,000 euro bracelet. Christian presses the button on his door, armrest again, and the privacy glass slides down. Anyone injured? Damage? I see. When? Christian glances at his watch again, then runs his fingers through his hair. No, not the fire department or the police. Not yet, anyway. A fire? At Christian's office? I gape at him, my mind racing. Taylor shifts so he can hear Christian's conversation. Has he? Good. Okay. I want a detailed damage report and a complete rundown of everyone who has access over the last five days, including the cleaning staff. Get hold of Andrea and get her to call me. Yeah, sounds like the ar argon is just as effective. Worth its weight in gold. Damage report? Argon? It rings a distant bell from chemistry class, an element, I think. I realize it's early. Email me in two hours. No, I need to know. Thank you for calling me. Christian hangs up, then immediately punches a number into the blackberry. Welch, good. When? Christian glances at his watch yet again. An hour then. Yes. 24-7 at the office data store. At the office off-site data store. Good. He hangs up. Philippe, I need to be on board within the hour. Monsieur? Monsieur? Shit, it's Philippe, not Gaston. <laughs> the car surges forward. Christian glances at me, his expression unreadable. Anyone hurt? I ask quietly. Christian shakes his head. Very little damage. He reaches over and clasps my hand, squeezing it reassuringly. Don't worry about this. My team is on it. And there he is, the CEO, in command, in control, and not flustered at all. Where was the fire? Server room. Gray house? Yes. His responses are clipped, so I know he doesn't want to talk about it. Why so little damage? The server room is fitted with a state-of-the-art fire suppression system. Of course it is. Anna, please, don't worry. I'm not worried. I lie. We don't know for sure that it was arson, he says, cutting to the heart of, the, of my anxiety. My hand clutches my throat in fear. Charlie Tango, and now this, what next? Okay, that was the end of Chapter 3. We'll pick up on Chapter 4 in the next video. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. It's definitely a little different in Anna's point of view, but I think I'm getting the hang of it a little better. Um and kind of getting Christian in there the right way. Um, hopefully you like it, and that's it for now. Until next time, reading by Re. Bye, guys.